I know this vlog is very, very, very boring at the beginning, but trust me, it gets better. <laughs> My name is Avery and welcome to the start of my Kindle Clear Out Readathon vlog. So I'm very excited for this readathon. Today is Monday, the start of the readathon. It's around 1.15 in the afternoon and I've already had a pretty busy day. <laughs> if you didn't know about this readathon, by the way, I'm going to leave my announcement video down below. It is a readathon that's a week long where we try and read as many Kindle books on our e-reader and our backlog of audiobooks as much as possible. I have already read some today so i started at midnight i started reading blind fall by amanda milo because this was the book i was the most excited for and this is an alien romance where our main character named santa and her guide dog coda are abducted by aliens and then like sold but then our main character breslin like sees that she's up for sale and he sees all the guys that are like looking at her wanting to buy her and he's like no they're gonna be like creeps and be horrible to her i'm gonna buy her and save her from these horrible people so that's what he does breslin and santa have already a banter and i love it i love their banter there's like it's funny i'm 35 percent of the way through because i also read some when I was in the gym, I just got back from the gym. I walked for an hour. I'm trying to do like a challenge for myself. I want to work out twice a day because I've realized that when I work out a lot, I get pretty tired. And so I'll wake, I'll do a workout in the morning or afternoon and then I'll go back to the gym because it's like literally a two minute walk from my apartment building to the apartment's gym. And so I'll go and ride the bike right before bed because I realized I always read before bed. Why not just read on the bike? Because instead of just laying in bed and reading, I could be riding the bike and reading. So I do that for three minutes and then I come home and I crash, which is weird for me because it takes me so long to fall asleep. It'll take me like three different ASMR videos to help me fall asleep. So this has been actually really beneficial for me. We'll see how long I stick to it. This is day three of me attempting it. So I read some while I was walking on the treadmill. I'm on chapter 10, 35% of the way through. And I'm really enjoying it, it's really funny. As I said before, they have this really funny banter and they're really sweet and like funny to each other. It's also really interesting because it's unlike any other alien romance book that I have read because since Santa is blind, um, you can't really like see what the alien species that Breslin in looks like. There is one scene where she like touches him to like get a feel of what he could possibly look like. She doesn't know. I don't really know either. <laughs> I don't even know if they have a different skin color. I don't know because he doesn't really narrate himself what he looks like. Like you don't see that in a book. I'm blue and have weird ears and no hair. Like they don't like you don't do that. Like normally it's the other character in the romance book that um, characterizes or gives those characteristics about the other person so you can get a feel of what they look like. But you don't get that in this one. And so it's really interesting. And then <laughs> Breslin is really funny. So he lives on this planet, kind of like a farm planet, and his job is like a, a beast trainer. So he like breaks beasts and trains them. He has this one beast named Masara. <laughs> and they're like a specific breed of beast. I forget the name, it starts with an N, but they're kind of like a mix of a horse and a cow. And this one, Masara, that he has, he's tried to sell her to like so many different people. And each time she gets sold, he gets a call like, <laughs> A couple minutes later, like, I'm gonna have to return her, give my money back. We don't want her because she's so stubborn and funny and nobody wants her because she's such a pain. And so Breslin has to keep her because no one wants her. And she is super funny and she's so stubborn and she won't, like, do the things that Breslin tells her without, like, threatening her. Like, saying, I'm gonna make you into a beef stew or I'm gonna make you into a area rug. <laughs> And she's like, oh, okay. And then she finally does what she says. He's not actually going to do those things, but he knows it's the only way to get to, her to do what he wants. <laughs> it's really funny to see Senna's um, reaction to it because she's just trying not to laugh. <laughs> but I really like their romance. I'm really 
excited about this book and I can't wait to read more of it. I have a bunch of assignments to do today. I have two assignments to do today and then I have to read a chapter from my Teaching with Disabilities textbook. And so it is a beautiful day outside. It's around 73 degrees, which is amazing for Texas. So I'm going to be doing my assignments outside. I'm gonna do it. I haven't done that in a while and I really want to because it's normally blistering hot or it's raining. Those are the two, <laughs> two constant weather patterns we have here. <laughs> well first I'm gonna eat some lunch and then I'm gonna do my homework so uh, we're gonna do that and then afterward I will have time to read. Okay I am done with my assignments for the day. It is 5 17. <laughs> I'm kind of upset because I was planning on getting as much homework and projects done as possible today and then yesterday I did a bunch of work to prepare for this week because I really wanted to read as much as possible, so I got assignments done early. My one class decided to do something new, and our assignment this week is to write a paper. So I will be writing a paper that's due on Wednesday. I'm probably gonna be doing that all day tomorrow. That's, what, that's gonna be my assignment for tomorrow. I've also added a book to my TBR, or I'm reading a book that's not on my TBR, um, because I realized that I also have books on Libby that I can access that I've had for a while that I want to finally read. And this one is Beautiful Player by Christina Lauren. I have been wanting to read this for over two months. It's been on more than two <laughs> monthly TBRs. I've been wanting to read this for forever. It is book number three in the Beautiful Bastard series. The whole series is right here, the ones I have read books two and then the two novellas in between. My Libby app has every single Christina Lauren book in that series, even the novellas on audio, so I'm in love. I've had this audiobook for so long, it's lapsed over and over and over again. So I was like, hey, I can listen to this book. Let's do it. So I'm about, I think 20% of the way through. I'm really enjoying this one, like a lot. This one is about Will and Ziggy, and Will, I believe, is one of the guys in the guy friend group in those books. Will and Ziggy knew each other kind of as kids. Will is older than Ziggy. I think he was 19 when Ziggy was 12 or 13 and so she has an older brother and that's Will's best friend. The boys met in college and then like over the summer or I think over the summer Will came and stayed with their family to work for her dad and so he would stay in her house when she was like 13 and so he's always seen her as uh, kind of like as his kid's little sister and so then it's years later she is a researcher in a lab. I don't know the direct <laughs> job that she has, but basically her brother and her dad at the beginning of the book kind of like give her an intervention and is like, all you do is work. You don't have any friends. You don't have a life outside of work. You need to go do something. They tell her that Will actually lives in, I think they live in New York, in New York. Will lives in New York. How about you give him a call and y'all can like be friends again. And so that's what she does. And they start becoming friends again. And it is really good so far. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Ziggy is really funny. I really like her because she's like quirky, but also because she doesn't have a filter. I actually love those characters where they don't have a filter and they just say what they say when they want to say it. They don't even think about how other people might perceive it. So she like is just talking to Will about some pretty like um, <laughs> not appropriate stuff to like talk about with someone like you don't really know all that well like right off the bat and he's like whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but um, she's really funny. I love them. I love how Will is accepting her and her quirks and like just how great their friendship is growing. This is like childhood crush but also friends to lovers kind of because she I believe had a crush on him as a kid. I'm really enjoying this one. Gonna be listening to it. I have to do my second trip to the gym today. I don't know when that's gonna happen but I'm going to be either reading Blindfall or listening to this book. Most likely reading. Um, I like listening when I have something to do with my hands, like um, knitting or doing a puzzle or writing something, so. Hello, it is the night of day one. I have not finished a book today. <laughs> it is 9.45, so I'm thinking I'm gonna crawl into bed and read as much as blind fall as I can. Hopefully I get it done tonight before I fall asleep, but we will see because I have to get up early tomorrow to work out before being in class from 10.30 to 4.30. That's what I'm up to tomorrow. I also have to write that paper tomorrow, so we'll see if I get any reading done tomorrow. I'm up to 45% of blind fall. I did that while uh, I went back to the gym and went 
on the bike and read it on the bike <laughs> and then um i'm 55 percent of the way through beautiful player by christina lauren i'm really enjoying this audiobook but yeah i'm going to brush my teeth hop into bed and read some blindfold okay i'm actually not asleep yet <laughs> but i wanted to say something about this book before i fall asleep because i need to fall asleep because it's getting late but i'm 57 percent of the way through and something just happened that I am actually really happy about in this book. I've read quite a few alien romance books. None of them have touched on the subject of periods and what it would be like for a woman to get a period on an alien planet. Like, what happens? There's no tampons. Like, there's no pads, you know? The scene just happened where she got her period. I just realized that doesn't happen in the other alien romance books that I read. That's something that most women in the world go through and so I thought it was awesome that it was put in this book. I didn't even know I needed that until now, you know? I don't think I've read a single Ruby Dixon where she talked about their period. Which is nuts to me because it's such a prevalent thing. Or maybe because of the cooies they don't have periods? I don't even know. Whoa, I think that's like a question to ask Ruby Dixon. Is it because of their cooie <laughs> they don't have periods? No. Anyway, I thought that was a very interesting part of this book. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Sorry for the really bad lighting. I'm trying to spruce up my reading vlogs by filming at different locations because a lot of mine I'm just sitting at my desk. <laughs> it's day two and it is 7.30 at night. <laughs> um, I've been doing schoolwork since... 10 30 this morning i technically ended at 6 30 because i just had dinner for an hour so that's seven hours of work is working on that paper i had i had my office hour work for that 10 30 to 12 30 and then i had um, a break in between an hour long break in between and then i had one class 30 minute break and then another class and then i worked on my paper it's not due until tomorrow at midnight but i have so much anxiety when it comes to procrastination I really like to get things done early um, or else my brain will just spiral and I will constantly be thinking about that task until I get it done. I still have two paragraphs left in my paper. I'm debating on whether I should just save it for tomorrow to finish it because I've already worked a lot today or finish it when I get back because I need to go to the grocery store. I normally don't go at night. I don't like going places at night because again, anxious person, but I need to go to the grocery store. I've been out of fruits and vegetables and my stomach is not agreeing with me i need those veggies and fruits in my diet i need to go do that i don't like going to the grocery store at night but um a girl's gotta do what she's gotta do hopefully it's open um i gotta figure out when hgb closes um i did finish a book though while i was in between classes um i did finish blind fall by Amanda Milo. I don't know when I'm gonna rate it. I really liked it. It's gonna be either a four or a five. I don't really know though. I'm thinking since I don't know if it's a four or a five, I'm gonna give it a four because I know it's not automatically a five. Is that how other people's brain works? I don't know. I really enjoyed this one. It was just super sweet and fun and funny. It's also a slow burn. Like they don't get together until like 80%. <laughs> but it's really sweet up until then. They really form a friendship bond before and they learn to trust each other. I just wish also there was a little bit more development and story at the end of the book. So that's a little bit of my thoughts. But I did really enjoy this one. It was somewhat steamy. I wish there was a little bit more if I'm gonna be honest. But it was really cool. I really recommend it. It's not like like action-packed so if you're looking for an action-packed book this isn't it it's just a simple sweet fun not high stakes alien romance book that takes place on a farm planet like <laughs> it's really sweet it's really cute it's funny i really recommend so thank you so much desi for recommending this one to me and yeah you didn't need to read any of the previous books because none of the previous characters popped up at all like no one no one popped up there is set up for the next book though um book number six um because the character from book number six is in this one book number five so you can just read this one by itself if you want to again i got this one off of ku um and this fits my disability challenge i have one hour left of beautiful player by christina lauren i'm hoping i will finish it while i'm at the grocery store
So, I'm gonna go to the grocery store. <laughs> Hello everyone, happy Wednesday. It is 2.45 in the afternoon. I just submitted my paper. Woohoo, I just had to write one paragraph and then the conclusion because I didn't write it yesterday. I decided to finish it today because I got home from the grocery store at like 8.30 and then I had to eat dinner and everything. So um, yeah, I just turned in my paper so I don't do that anymore, but I have an, another <laughs> pro assignment to do by midnight tonight. So I'm gonna do that um, after I'm done talking to you, get that done. So I have finished two books since I've last talked to you. When I was at the grocery store, I finished Beautiful Player by Christina Lauren. I'm giving this four to five stars. I really, really enjoyed this one. It was really cute and sweet. I think it might be like my second favorite or my favorite. I don't know, favorite one of the Beautiful Bastard series so far. I really liked this one. The conflict was a little blah, but like sometimes conflict in romance books is just like that. It's just blah. <laughs> and then today I started and finished um, let it shine by Alyssa cole this filled my by poc author i believe that's how you pronounce it or is it by Bach? i don't know um but Alyssa cole is a black woman so this fits the bill for that um this is a three and a half hour audiobook off of audible escape because i have the kindle book for it so and a lovely person in the comments um in my tbr video stated that this is an audible escape so thank you so much if that was you so i listened to that while i was walking on campus today because wednesdays are the only days where i go on campus because i had a kinesiology workout class this morning and it kicked my butt i am exhausted at least i don't have to go to the gym today because that worked me out really hard so while i was walking to campus to that class and walking back um i ended up finishing the whole audiobook today while i was walking so um this one is um set in the 60s i believe it's like it's a little novella i believe it's only 100 something pages and um it's about sophie and ivan they knew each other as kids also sophie is black and ivan is white and this is in the 1960s so there are not a lot of people who support their soon to be relationship um or even their friendship when ivan and sophie were kids Sophie's mom used to work for Ivan's parents by being like their like cleaning lady and um, I believe like cook and so Sophie and Ivan kind of like grew up together until one day um, when they were like playing some boys came and um, I think started like beating up Ivan for hanging out with Sophie and playing with him and then her mom came out to stop it and she ended up having a um, I think aneurysm in the middle of it and she ended up passing away and they haven't seen each other since until um, Sophie is at a meeting for like a peaceful protest or sit-down protest possibly it's like a non-violent protest group and Ivan just so happens to be there and they reconnect after all these years and it was really good my only issue is like I wanted it to be longer I wanted like a full-blown story um, but that wasn't it but that's okay i gave it four out of five stars i really liked it i really recommend it um and i'm definitely going to be reading more of Alyssa cole's uh, books also if you're not really into the steamy stuff it's not that steamy um i believe there's only like two scenes and it's like kind of like a little bit fade to black but a little bit not so take that what you will if you don't really like steamy stuff anyway i'm gonna get to finishing my homework for the day um and i'll chat with y'all later also i just wanted to say sorry if um the beginning of the this vlog is very uneventful because i'm just doing like schoolwork and reading in between me doing schoolwork but like the weekend will be fun i'll try and do something fun on the weekend for the vlog <laughs> hello um it is later i have finished everything on my to-do list for the day also sorry if the camera's a little shaky the tripod is currently on my bed right now again i'm trying to uh, spruce up the location of filming i haven't done this one before so even though it kind of makes the camera a little shaky i'm trying not to move all that much but i was about to take a nap and i'm going to take a nap it's 5 30 <laughs> but right before i got into bed I got a Real Bookish box. If you don't know, Real Bookish is a book subscription box service that I absolutely adore. I'm linking their Instagram down below. They're fantastic. They sent me a 
little women box that was amazing uh that print right there is from it i have a computer sticker from it as well that i love they're just amazing i unboxed the circus themed one in my birthday book haul which will be up in about either later this week or the week after that i'm not sure but they decided to send me the pirate's life box and i am so excited because i really wanted this box because i saw a print of will and elizabeth from pirates of the caribbean if y'all didn't know will and elizabeth were my ultimate like childhood otp like that's who i rooted for i watched dead men's chest over and over and over and over and over again as a kid i had it on dvd i think my dad ended up stealing it from redbox possibly i don't remember <laughs> But uh, we watched it over and over and over again. I was obsessed. I love Elizabeth and Will. I love them so stinking much. I even watched the, not the fourth one because the fourth one doesn't have them in it and we don't talk about the fourth one. The fourth one doesn't exist. The fifth one I watched in theaters with my friends and then the, the end of it, I was sobbing, crying mess because if you've seen it, you know. And all my friends looked at me like I was crazy and I was trying to tell them that like this is my childhood dream come true is the end of that movie i think i was like 19 or 20 when that movie came out and so just an adult crying at the end of that movie anyway y'all didn't want to hear about that um we're gonna unbox this Ooh, okay so here is the little card and it has um all of the things in here and the description and who made them there's a little pirate coin in here which is cute um let's see right here i see Ooh, it's a bath bomb i love bath bombs i love them but i honestly <laughs> can't get up enough courage to actually buy myself one because i kind of feel like they're kind of a waste of money sometimes because you just buy something to like disappear in the bathtub so i love that this is in this box because I haven't bought a bath bomb in a very long time. So this is treasure bath bomb. Drop this sparkly bath bomb into your bath to find a pirate themed treasure inside. Ooh, there's going to be something inside the bath bomb. Um, I don't know when I'm going to use that, but I love that. Okay, let's see here. This looks like a poster. I think it's a poster. I don't know which way it opens. I don't want to ruin it. There we go, got it. Okay, here we go. Yes, this is how you open it. Okay, so it is a poster. Ooh! Okay, so this is a iconic female pirate's poster. The pirate poster depicts Fable standing alongside famous real life female pirates Anne Bonny, Mary Reed, and Grace O'Malley. Oh, wow! I guess Fable is the character in the book I'm gonna see soon. But isn't this so cute? Like that's so cute. I love that. I love the artwork. This was created by Anne Pomalova. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm so sorry if I'm not. So here is a bookmark that says, more light cast over the morning water. It became new every moment that lay ahead like an uncharted sea. This was a new beginning. Very pretty see art right here there's this big thing right here let's see what this is oh my gosh <gasps> holy crap <laughs> y'all look who's on my mug <sighs> it's captain jack sparrow <gasps> the problem is not the problem the problem is your attitude about the problem captain jack sparrow oh my gosh look how pretty that artwork is and then it's red on the inside oh my gosh i love this i love this i am going to be using this i don't drink coffee i don't drink tea but i'll drink some water or juice out of this for sure <laughs> i will be utilizing this definitely i'm so excited and this mug was created by a fine quotation we got another coin i bet there's just a bunch of coins in here Oh my gosh, this is what I was looking at. Oh my word. It is a Will and Elizabeth notebook. Mm. Oh my word. It's so cute and tiny and I love them. Oh my gosh. And when you open it, it says like 
this book belongs to and it's just a little notebook oh my word look at them this is my ultimate childhood otp y'all like i loved them with every fiber of my being i loved them so i'm definitely really excited to have this this book is called oh so that character's name is fable so this is called fable let me unbox the book this cover is absolutely stunning okay so this is called fable by adrian young i've heard amazing things about adrian young but look at this gorgeous cover like isn't that stunning and then when you look really close there's a ship in her eye like that is stunning like can we do the <laughs> her face is too big for my face <laughs> we can't do the side by side thing but i love this wow this is beautiful and gorgeous welcome to a world made dangerous by the sea and by those who wish to profit from it where a young girl must find her place and her family while trying to survive own a world built for men for a 17 year old fable the daughter of the most powerful trader in the narrows the sea is the only home she has ever known it's been four years since the night she watched her mother drown during an unforgiving storm the next day her father abandoned her on a legendary island filled with thieves and little food to survive she must keep to herself learn to trust no one and rely on the unique skills her mother taught her the only thing that keeps her going is the goal of getting off the island finding her father and demanding her rightful place beside him and his crew to do so fable enlists the help of a young trader named west to get her off the island and across the narrows to her father but her father's rivalries and the dangers of his trading and enterprise have only multiplied since she last saw him and fable soon finds that west isn't who he seems together they will have to survive more than the treacherous storms that haunt the narrows if they are going to stay alive like i'm definitely getting parts of the caribbean vibes i am so excited for this y'all this just got put way up on my tbr i am so excited for this book i've heard great things about this author do i have to read the other books do you think by adrian young before this one i don't know let me know it looks like next month's theme is a twisted web and i think you kind of see the sherlock holmes silhouette and then there's also the anna and the french kiss one which i think i'm getting as well which i'm very excited for i loved anna and the french kiss because look you can see them and she has her little blonde streak in her hair i actually really liked this series by stephanie perkins um there's something that i don't like in it but i really like the series i'm also a minority and when the third book is my favorite book in the series isla and the happily ever after is my favorite i'm obsessed with that one but i actually really like that series so i'm very excited for that again thank you so 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 much real bookish for sending this my way um i absolutely adore y'all's boxes like so 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 much i will be utilizing like everything i love everything thank you <laughs> hello happy thursday i love thursdays because it is the end of the school week for me <laughs> so i have gotten all of my school work done um except for a quiz but that's not due until sunday so i have a couple days to do that and then i have some like work stuff to do for my job this week but other than that i am completely free to read last night i decided to start i think it's called one cruel night by k.a lindy i've heard some amazing things about k.a lindy from steph from steph's romance book talk who's another co-host for this readathon and this was free on book i think like yesterday or the day before that so i downloaded it for the newest book on your tbr that's the prompt that I use that for it's like a 90 something page novella it's like number 0.5 in the series and so book one is about this couple like their whole book but this little prequel is about how they met this is like a one night stand kind of romance and so this prequel is about their one night stand that happened i believe six years before um the first book so when they meet i believe he's like 24 and she's like 18 um and they're in paris and um, I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. I found it really fun, but like, <laughs> it was really unbelievable. So this girl, our heroine, um, has been living in Paris for the summer with her best friend. All the time she sees this guy in the park writing in his notebook, and then the night before she leaves she sees him at a party and finally gets enough courage to go like talk to him, and it's like their night together 
and um, I just found it really bizarre to like trust him to go and take you places and do things and go back to your place and like just be alone with him when you don't like know him. It was just sketchy to me like I would never do that because you're a stranger and you could be a serial killer <laughs> but that's just my personal preference. People might actually really really love this one. Um, I am interested in the actual first book to see what happens to them because it ends off with them not being on good terms and so yeah <laughs> but it was pretty fun um, really fun short novella I recommend it I really want to go and get the first book though and hopefully I'll read it not this week obviously but at another time I don't know what book I'm gonna start next but I have around 40 minutes until my first class of the day so I'm gonna pick out a book eat some lunch and then I'll chat with you later okay it is later in the day it's 5 30 I am done with schoolwork for the week mostly I just have to take a quiz and then again do some work stuff I'm dedicating the rest of the week to reading um, but I just finished a book <laughs> that I'm giving one star to <laughs> um, I haven't given a one star in a while that was Wild Hearts by Kimber Wild I think that's the title of it I read this for the oldest book on your Kindle prompt now I know in my TBR I picked Blood Rose by Danielle Rose but I started it well on my lunch break today and like I wasn't feeling it at all so I switched to this one and man I got to like 50% and just skimmed the rest I was like nope done I just want to say I read something nope because I've realized all the books that are like on my older TBR list like they're boring and they don't they're not good like at all I think I'm gonna go and clear out a bunch of those books because I didn't like this one at all. This one was a paranormal shifter wolf romance, but it takes place in the 60s. But my one of my main issues in this book is that it didn't feel like it was in the 60s. It felt like it was written in the 1800s. She rides her horse everywhere. She rides her horse into town and just like the way that they spoke and then the- it's just- it didn't- it was like not good it was not good basically this woman comes across a wolf in her on her property she's like 19 it's also an age gap he's like 10 years older than her she finds a wolf in the woods that her like cabin farm is on with her she lives on there with her grandpa dad and brother it's like her romance with this shifter man and he's trying to like hi guys it's editing Avery I'm gonna pop in for a second here um, because I realized like this cut off because my roommates came home and you could hear them throughout the whole entire rest of the clip um, So you didn't hear a word I was saying um, Which is totally fine totally understandable um, So it gets cut off, but um, I can't finish the clip for you because I honestly have no idea what I said Just don't read this book. This book is bad. Just overall. Uh, you can check my Goodreads review I guess if you want to know some things, but um, I don't even remember what I hated, but I hated it So just don't read it, please <laughs> Hello everyone, happy Friday. I actually got ready for the day. Look at me, I look presentable. <laughs> um, I actually like my look today. I'm a little nervous about going out in public though <laughs> with this look. I'm wearing a maxi skirt, which I love maxi skirts, but I've come to the realization that like the only cute way to wear a maxi skirt is by like either wearing a really tight shirt and tucking it in, or by wearing maybe a crop top or tying a shirt to the side just making the shirt look tight I don't like tight clothes <laughs> um, I am very self-conscious about my stomach area so I don't really like wearing tight clothes but I did it today and you know what I don't feel all that bad about myself today um, I don't know if I'll go in public wearing it though if you get triggered by talking about like workouts or um, body positivity or body consciousness just maybe skip forward to like a minute or two or three minutes um I have been, always been self-conscious about my stomach and I know that like I've been trying to um get rid of that extra fat for like literally years and I've kind of come to the realization that like it probably won't happen like I don't think my body's honestly built a way to be really skinny you know I've started to work out every single day which in like 
the grand scheme of things right now isn't like doing anything I haven't like lost weight probably I don't know I haven't checked my weight which I don't check my weight and I don't have like a scale here because all I'd be doing 24 7 is checking my weight which is very unhealthy like I haven't lost weight from it but I feel like just working out every single day has made me feel better about myself and has put more energy into me and has made me feel better about myself so I feel like if you're struggling the same way I am I feel like maybe just going on a 30 minute walk every single day can really just help in your mental health and the way that you view yourself because it really has helped me all I do is go on the treadmill for an hour a day and then maybe go back to ride the bicycle in there for 40 to 30 minutes at night it's not all that much my heart can't handle it I have a condition to where my heart rate can't get really high so so I just I walk and honestly I I feel way better about myself but um I'm still self-conscious about going out in public wearing this we'll see we'll see what happens today last night I did not start a new book I finished that horrible shifter book it was so bad it was so bad it was so bad I have I think like a couple other books that are on my TBR but I don't know if I want to get to them I realized like I'm kind of feeling like slumpy like I don't want to read anything like last night I didn't read anything I just watched basically about seven episodes of season 35 of Survivor <laughs> like that's all I did yesterday I came to the realization that um, I don't really want to read any of the books that are on my TBR currently um, that I haven't read yet um, maybe the Wicked Villains one we'll see I don't know but I'm not really in the mood. It was making me really slumpy because I was like, I don't want to read those, so I might as well just not read at all because um, I'm not in the mood for them. I want to read them, but I just don't want to read them right now. So I've realized like, Avery, it's okay if you don't get a blackout. Like, it's not the end of the world. I think I've already got bingo. It's okay if you don't get blackout. It's okay. Like, at all of the arcs that I have on my Kindle right now, I'm not really all that interested currently. I'm interested in reading them, but like, my mood is not there I just read a really bad book and I want to read a book that I'm like full-blown super excited for I think I found that I went and just like last night while I was watching Survivor <laughs> like scrolled through all my ebooks because I have over 500 which is ridiculous I found a couple that I'm kind of interested in at the moment but one that I'm really excited for is called The Forbidden Passion of a Governess which looks really good this really reminds me of the madness of lordy and mackenzie cover with like the purple and i believe she's also wearing a red dress i don't remember but the text is kind of similar also i love nanny and governess books because i'm a nanny so um or i was a nanny so um i'm very excited for this one of my favorite books is jane Eyre, and she's a governess so like i love any governess story so this one says when amelia stewart is relieved from her post as a governess in the hutchinson family she finds herself accepting a new position Upon entering Glastonbrook, though, she instantly becomes aware that the mansion is gloomy and neglected due to an unsolved murder that took place within its walls. Adding to her troubles, she can't deny her immediate attraction towards the dark and mysterious current Earl of Cunningham. When her secret passion is reciprocated, will she surrender to it? Is the lure of a forbidden romance enough for a chance at true love? Joshua Forrest lost his parents under mysterious circumstances at a young age, ever since he's been the sole guardian of the Cunningham name and his younger sister as well. When he hires a governess to teach his sister before entering society, he does not expect a ravishing beauty to show up at his door. Their tension-filled encounters make his yearning stronger and stronger, but he cannot succumb to the temptation. Will he let the captivating governess in and allow her to help him? escape the ghosts of his past. They may come from different classes, but neither can deny the immediate attraction between them. For a chance at a future together, they will need to work alongside to let go of their past and solve the mystery surrounding the mansion. Until then, though, can they resist the temptation or is their connection too strong to control? So this is like a romance with a little bit of a murder mystery plot to it, which I haven't read all that many of or any of probably <laughs> I'm really excited for this I'm really excited so I think I'm going to go make myself some breakfast when I'm done I think I'm going to possibly go sit by the pool and read if I'm feeling brave enough to go out in public in all honesty if not I'll probably just read in my bed but it's Friday morning I don't see a lot of people outside right now so we'll see what happens <laughs> Um, I 
did change clothes. I sat outside for a little bit in those clothes and I got, I was just, I just wasn't comfortable. <laughs> and there's like a slit in the skirt that like, it's not very, very uh, comfortable for me to like, kind of like sprawl and lay out when I read um, outside in front of other people. So I went inside and changed and put on like a t-shirt and just some shorts, but I went outside for a little bit. So I'm a little proud of myself, but <laughs> um, my sister just left. She came over for a little bit and um, we sat by the pool together. Oh, I've also finished a book since the last time I talked to you. So I ended up reading The Engagement Gift by Lauren Blakely. Um, this was on my TBR. It doesn't complete a challenge, but I had the audiobook, but I also had the ebook, so it fits the challenge. And it's on Audible Escape. And it was only two and a half hours to listen to. And so I just did some like bracelet making, crafting while I um, listened to that. This is just a short audiobook about a woman who is getting married. She's engaged to this man, the love of her life, but she's always had a fantasy that she's wanted to act out and um he may or may not help her with that so that's what that's about it was a really good it was steamy wow um i've read one other lauren blakely and i didn't really like it it was like mediocre but this one was actually pretty good for how short it was so i'm gonna give it a four star i really enjoyed this one and i think i might want to continue on with the series before audible escape ends <laughs> um because i think they're all pretty short in the series and then i ended up starting the Forbidden Passion of a Governess by the pool. I was reading it by the pool and I'm really enjoying this surprisingly. I am 27% of the way through. I like how short the chapters are. I love short chapters. It makes me feel like I'm being really productive. I don't know why authors make their chapters long. Like I don't get it. It serves no purpose. <laughs> so our heroine Amelia becomes a governess to uh, the 16 year old girl, his, her older brother hired her to be a governess because the previous house that she was at, the girls that she were, she was a governess for, like, they don't need her anymore. So they went and found her a different position. But um, the house that she like goes to now with a 16 year old is gonna be like her new like charge. The house is basically haunted. Like it's huge, creepy, like barren, desolate, like only the Earl, his sister, the governess, the cook, and I think like the footman. Only all the only five of those people live in that whole entire house. And we don't know why. We don't know what happened to his parents. It's kind of like a murder mystery, kind of. I'm kind of enjoying it. I'm finding it a little bit difficult with the the writing styles taking me a little while to like um, mesh with and get used to. Um, it's just a new writing style that I have to get used to. Our author a lot of the time likes to just like state what's happening and going on. Um, she doesn't really talk about the past and past feelings of the characters. She talks about their feelings in present time, but I'm guessing like the past information or past feelings about certain things just will come up at a later point, hopefully. If it doesn't, that's a problem. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. It's like um, the Earl has some dark, mysterious past that has left him a brooding hero. <laughs> And um, Amelia's trying to figure it out without, figure out why without prying, so. And they can't help but be very attracted to one another. I'm getting, like, huge, like, Jane Eyre vibes. <laughs> There's also that age gap. I believe she's 21, and he might be, like, 30, possibly. I don't know. There's a bigger age gap in Jane Eyre. I don't think that the secret that Mr. Rochester has in Jane Eyre is the secret that he has. <laughs> I don't think that's the case, but you never know. But, like, I'm just getting vibes where, like, there's that, like, tension. Like, really, like, strong tension between them. Hopefully, I really like this and I get used to the writing style. Today, I'm gonna try and find another audiobook while I get some work done for my job and clean my room. Hi, guys! I thought I would teach you how to make my chocolate cookies. I absolutely adore these. They're gluten-free, by the way, and I love them a lot. So first, I'm just going to be listing off the ingredients you need. First, you need three cups of powdered sugar, two third cup of baking cocoa, one half teaspoon of salt, three large egg whites, not beaten, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and one and one half cups of chocolate chips. So you're going to start out with a big mixing bowl to mix the first couple of ingredients together. So you're going to start out by putting the three cups of powdered sugar into the bowl. As you can obviously see me doing, 
right here. <laughs> I know it looks like I'm putting more than three cups in there, but I'm actually using a one-fourth scooper because the bag that I had all my powdered sugar in um, is too small for me to fit the whole cup sized cup in there, uh, like the scooper. Um, so I just used up one of my powdered sugar bags, I only had a little bit left, and then I used up some of the other one. So this is when I got my baking cocoa powder out, and I will be adding two thirds cup of that into my mixing bowl as well. And then I also add my salt, the one half teaspoon of salt, and then I start mixing all of that together. It'll look like this when you're done mixing. So that is when you're gonna start adding the egg whites and vanilla extract. So this is when I added my one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then I added my three large egg whites and I am mixing that into my mixing bowl. This took me <laughs> a while. I normally have a KitchenAid back at my hometown. Um, with my parents but i do not have one here so i had to hand mix everything um so it's pretty hard uh, <laughs> um because i didn't have the equipment i needed and i don't really like using whisks because it's really hard to get the mixture out of the whisk when you whisk something <laughs> so i don't really like using whisks um so yeah the batter is pretty hard to mix this is me going to get <laughs> a new utensil to stir by the way <laughs> i thought a fork um might be easier so <laughs> that's what i did um so yeah i'm just mixing all of that up it becomes really thick it kind of yeah has the consistency of brownie batter so it'll look like this when you're done mixing everything together and it looks very delicious <laughs> and so when you're done mixing everything together that's when you add your last ingredient which is the one and one half cups of chocolate chips you're gonna want to hand stir these even if you have a KitchenAid or a like mixer you're gonna want to um, hand mix these just so the chocolate chips don't break apart when using a KitchenAid or a mixer or something like that so you could have done this before you made your mixture but you're gonna want to line at least two baking sheets with parchment paper you need to use parchment paper um, because the cookies will definitely stick to like a regular pan and they need the parchment paper to spread out um, because when you scoop your cookies you're using a one tablespoon scooper by the way um, you're gonna put like a tablespoon of cookie mixture into the tablespoon scooper and scoop them into little balls they don't even look like balls they're not supposed to look like balls <laughs> when you put them on the parchment paper um, and when you are doing this you're gonna want to spread them out because when they cook they really grow um, not up they grow like out onto the paper they get bigger so that's why you space them really far apart I don't put more than six on a baking sheet or else they'll start to bake together they'll like mix together so yeah they don't need to be pretty in the end they will become like circular shape you'll see towards the end of the video but yeah, you're gonna put them on a parchment sheet and then you're going to let the cookies sit on that cooking sheet for 30 minutes it helps them sit and everything after the 30 minutes are up you're going to put them in the oven at 350 degrees anywhere from 10 to 12 minutes and then they will look like this they look chewy and chocolatey i absolutely love these cookies my mom really prefers them with i believe walnuts in them she likes me to put walnuts in there so you would just put um, three-fourths cup of chocolate chips and three-fourths cup of walnuts if you want to put walnuts in there too but I really love these so I hope y'all really liked learning about how to make cookies today hi guys it's Saturday happy Saturday it's around 2 p.m. I haven't done anything today um, I slept in because I had a really bad <laughs> I had a really bad night last night I've been really um, struggling even more than usual with my anxiety um it's been flaring up pretty bad recently um like re like really bad um and last night was just not it for me <laughs> i have a bunch of coping mechanisms for when i get in those like spiraling moments but it's kind of hard to do to get yourself out of the spiraling moments to veer off and go to something different like your brain doesn't want to 
react that way. Your brain doesn't want to fixate on something else. So it was just kind of bad for me last night. Something that I have found that kind of helps with my anxiety is, um, especially with like the semester with Zoom and being online and having everybody look at you all the time because you're constantly being looked at um, on the screen because my university requires that we have our cameras on at all time. Um, and like the professor would legit tell you turn your camera on so I have to have it on all the time so uh, I get super anxious about it so something that happens with me with my anxiety one of the side effects for it is I skin pick my fingers it's gross I know but I rip apart my cuticles um, as you notice I don't wear as much nail polish or when I do wear nail polish it's really cracked because um, I'll just rip off all of my nail polish or the cuticles of my skin without even realizing that I'm doing it I'll look down and it's already done that's why like I don't, I don't put on nail polish a lot anymore because I'll put it on one day and literally later that night or the next day, if somebody is talking to me or if I'm talking to somebody, it's gone. It's all the nail polish is gone. So it's kind of like, what's the point of wearing nail polish right now? That's really why I liked wearing acrylics because I couldn't do that. I couldn't skin pick because they're fake nails and you can't do anything. I don't really have the money and the energy to go to a nail salon and it's COVID so I haven't gone to, to get uh, acrylics in over a year. Something that's helped me is I found these magnetic rings. So um, one of my favorite YouTubers ever is Colleen Ballinger. I watch her religiously every single day. I love her. I love her family. Like I love her so much and she deals with <laughs> the skin picking too and so she said in one of her vlogs how she got little magnet balls and just like has helped her instead of doing that she fixates on like forming the magnet balls which I wanted to do that um, like form the little magnet balls and its shapes and just mess with them um, but like a, a little pack of magnet balls that makes a cube like this big is like 30 plus dollars I'm like I don't want to pay that um, so I found this for ten or nine dollars on Amazon they're magnetic rings that you can, they also just spin on your finger. This one is my favorite, you go like this. You can go back and forth. Um, you can basically just do whatever you want. They're awesome fidget toys. I really like them, I keep one in on my desk and then I keep one, um, I just realized my desk is a mess, holy crap, don't look at it. And then one in my backpack or purse. I need to probably get a new pack. It comes with a pack of two um, when you buy them, but I really like these. Um, they really help with my anxiety with talking to people because I'm not great at talking to people. <laughs> when I do talk to people, I babble. And then that's really bad because when I look back, because whenever I have a conversation with somebody, when it's over, my brain always looks back on that conversation. It's like, what just happened? And I think about what happened and then I start like hating myself because of the stupid stuff I said because I was babbling. Um, <laughs> so that's how I communicate. That's that's my reaction to communicating with people. <laughs> when I talk to somebody, that's why I really like texting or messaging people way more than like phone calls, just because I can like think about what I'm gonna say before I say it and then I don't have those horrible thoughts about myself, if that makes sense. <laughs> so if you have social anxiety, if you have anxiety overall, I really recommend these. It's kind of um, difficult because they do make a lot of noise as you can See, I'd feel too embarrassed to probably wear these out in public, even though it would probably be beneficial for me um, to like literally have these on me at all time, because um, I wouldn't be harming my skin or rubbing apart my skin without me by subconsciously doing it, not meaning to do it obviously, but anyway, um, yeah, last night was just really bad for me and I kind of had a little bit of a breakdown, um, so I didn't get like any reading done last night. I did finish a book um, since the last time I talked to you that is Aries by Gemma James. This is a little short novella that I read. This was actually way better than I expected it to be. I ended up giving it a 3.75 or 3.5 stars. So basically I hauled this in an ebook haul a while ago and this is the story of Nova Lee. I think that's her name and she is a queen for out of land and um, when she was 12, her parents died and her uncle got custody of her and it's now like the, basically fills in for her until she comes of age at 18. But when she's 12, she gets basically sold or put in this binding agreement that when she turns 18, she will go to this. It's like this giant island where it's like set up by there being 12 floors and it's all, each floor is I think a zodiac sign and a person 
I guess the ruler of that zodiac sign in this agreement and like auction thing she's basically it's a virginity auction book <laughs> so when she turns 18 she gets to, she has to go to this island and each month she is with the different a different man in a different leader in the zodiac lore or rules over the zodiacs so like the first book she is with the commander of all of them like basically the ruler of all of them uh, the commander and he's an aries he's the leader of the aries and she basically each month has to go to a different zodiac sign person and then by the end of it by the end of the year um, there's going to be an auction for her virginity because they're not allowed to like take away her virginity through all of this um, I feel like Jen from the book refuge might really like this or she might really hate it. I don't know <laughs> There's like dubious consent. There is stuff that she does not consent to so this is dark stuff So um, if that's not your jam, I don't know if I'd recommend this to you at all. This is only 70 something pages um, It was really fast um, It was kind of unrealistic with like um, how fast they catch feelings because everything but it was entertaining it was entertaining and i want to read the rest of the series i want to know what happens because the concept is so cool and interesting to me i feel like this is a darker book so i really recommend this one though if you're interested and so i started that book i didn't read any more of the governess one i really want to go to the craft store today because i want to make myself happy today <laughs> i want to do something that'll make me happy and i know i'm on a book buying ban that i'm going to be sticking to i haven't bought a single book since my birthday or a birthday celebration i read a book i i went on a shopping book spree a week after my birthday but that's when i visited my family so i haven't bought a book since then i don't plan to until christmas or after christmas i'm trying to save money for a trip that i'm going on soon so i'd rather go on this trip then buy way more books. I love way more books. I, I'm I'm overflowing on my shelves. <laughs> yeah, I can't go buy books. I can't go to bookstores or else I'm going to be buying a book if I go to a bookstore. So I'm gonna go to the craft store because I actually do need stuff from the craft store. I'm gonna probably pick out an audiobook to listen to. I have to find an audiobook that I also have in my Kindle library. I made a whole list on Goodreads. Let me know if you wanna see that. It's a list of books that are on Audible Escape and on my Kindle. But I don't know how that would benefit y'all because they might not be on your Kindle, but <laughs> there's like 85 books that are on Audible Escape and on in my Kindle library, but they they might not match with you. But if you want that list, please let me know because Audible Escape is ending in a, less than a month and I'm sad. So I'm going to get a bunch of listening in through that. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to be participating in the Audible Escape readathon. I can't remember the title of it, but like Nicole and Izzy and Sarah and I believe a couple other people are hosting it um my watch later playlist is like so long i haven't gotten to those videos yet but i know that it's a thing i need to get to their announcement video <laughs> anyway i've been talking for so long y'all are probably really bored of me um, so i'm gonna get to the craft store hi guys i'm back from the craft store while i was there i was listening to an ebook well actually i have the ebook but it's an audiobook. I was listening to it. I'm almost halfway through. I think it's called Claimed by the Vampire Kings by Charlene Hartnady. I read a Dragon Shifter series by Charlene Hartnady and actually really liked it. Only two books in the series though. I think that series is a spinoff of this series. It's kind of like an alternate reality of like our world, but we like know that vampires exist. Um, vampire Kings, um, have a bunch of women that in the town that they live in just come to the claiming and so they look at all the women and then they pick which woman is their mate out of the bunch like that's like the claiming ceremony our main character tanya was the woman who was claimed i really like how we see the representation of a not a skinny mini in here she's not a skinny mini she's got some curves to her which i really like that representation because i feel represented <laughs> she gets claimed by a vampire king there's like two vampire kings for this town one vampire king claims her and then the other one claims a woman turns out that woman ends up dying you figure out how and why and the other vampire claims that they have to share her for the next 10 days and then by the end of the 10 days just to pick one of them but it's kind of like she doesn't have to pick them actually so it's very interesting. It's really insta-lovey and insta-lusty, but I'm having a fun time listening to it. It's not the best thing ever written, but it's pretty entertaining. So while I was listening to that, I went to the craft store and I thought I would give y'all a little craft haul because 
I don't know about y'all, but I love crafting. So first thing I got is this cutting board. I love crafting and I'm making a specific thing for my friends. I'm having to use this, so I can't tell you what I'm gonna make because it's gonna be a surprise. And then I got a puzzle because I'm in the mood for a puzzle. So this is a 500 piece uh, succulent puzzle. I really like it, so I bought it. Then I bought a new bullet journal because um, I didn't really use my bullet journal this year because I didn't set up all my spreads before. 2020 started and I think that's what I need to do. I need to set up a lot of my spreads before the next year, before 2021, because I just couldn't find time to do it in, in the months during the year. So I'm gonna set up all my spreads before the year starts. So that's why I got this bullet journal. Then I just got some Mod Podge. I got some um, string for bracelet making because I've been getting into bracelet making recently. Just some pretty colors. I needed some more white and I got two pretty purplish red colors and I got some mini baggies I need these for um, sorting things got some cardstock for my craft that I'm going to be doing as well as some envelopes for sending those things to people I got some yarn because I am making something for my mom because her birthday is very soon and then I found these on sale and had to buy them because they're really cute they were like 60 50 percent off these very cute blue earrings I love them and then I found a fidget toy that I'm gonna try. Um, it's one of those squeeze ones. So it's one of those squeeze ones. Hopefully I really like this one. I was talking about fidget toys earlier. And so hopefully this one works for me. And then the last thing I got that was very expensive, I got a new diamond painting kit. You can see like the whole print, it's some sunflowers. I feel like this one will be really great for me. It seems really big. I can, I like to do this when I'm stressed or anxious and I think this will really work for me. It was a hefty price, but I feel like the end result for this is something I would put actually in my room and hang up because yellow is my favorite color. So I feel like this is a great um, deal for me, even though it was pretty pricey, but I normally get the my diamond paintings off of Amazon. Uh, but they're really tiny and yeah they're cheap but like i don't think i'd ever like hang them in my room if you know what i mean i still have to finish a disney princess one i haven't done that one yet i haven't finished it but yeah that's all i got i'm still mesmerized by this <laughs> there's like a whole fidget toy section in the craft store which was pretty cool for me so i am going to be finishing my audiobook or not finishing but continue to listen to it um while I do some crafty things. I don't know, maybe I'll do the puzzle. Maybe I'll get started on my crafts for people. Maybe I'll start the thing I'm gonna knit for my mom. We will see. I'm also currently doing laundry, so my sheets aren't on. So I'm waiting for those to be done. So that's what's going on with me. I'm like mesmerized by this. <laughs> I really like this already. Okay, I think this was a great purchase for me. <laughs> guys it's actually been a little bit under a week since uh, the readathon has ended um if you have kept up to date on my instagram i've been going through some things recently and i'm going to be take making a dedicated video to the certain things i'm going through recently coming up in the next video or two you'll see when it happens um so i haven't really had time to film the ending of this and i'm just now getting around to editing this vlog so i thought i would wrap up the reading vlog for y'all also the live show that we had for the kindle clear readathon is on brie's channel and it'll be linked down below i had a lot of fun and thank you so much brie for letting me host this readathon even though i wasn't that great <laughs> of a host <laughs> but um thank you again and i loved uh hosting with um, the other Brie, <laughs> Brie Hill and Steph and Zay. I love all of them a lot. So I thought I would tell y'all about all the books that I read in this week. My starting page count, my goal that I had with my TBR that I had was 1,184 pages. Um, that was my starting count. And then my ending count, the number of pages I actually read was 1,875. So it was more than I predicted, but my books were not the same in my TBR. I'm like what's new? I always have a TBR change. A book that I did not finish, but I read 
86 pages of during that week was The Forbidden Passion of a Governess by Lucy Langton. I talked about this. I have since finished it and it will be in my October wrap up. It's not for me guys unfortunately. Um, you can go watch the wrap up whenever that comes out. Then when we get to the books that I actually did finish we have Blind Fall by Amanda Mila, which I ended up giving 4.5 out of 5 stars and this fills the challenge for disability representation in it. Then I read A Beautiful Player by Christina Lauren. I listened to this off of Libby and I ended up giving this one 4 stars. This did not complete the prompt. Then I finished uh, Let It Shine by Alyssa Cole which I gave 4 stars to which is the book for uh, by POC author. I really liked that one and I listened to that one off of Audible Escape. And then the fourth book that I read was One Cruel Night by K.A. Lindy. I ended up giving this one a 3.5 stars and this fills the prompt for read the newest book on your Kindle. And then the fifth book that I read was Wild Hearts by Kimber White which I gave one star book which fills the prompt for oldest book on your TBR. Then I read The Engagement Gift by Lauren Blakely which I gave four stars to. This does not fill a prompt. Then I read Aries by Gemma James which I ended up giving 3.5 out of 5 stars too. Again, this does not fill a prompt. And then I ended up finishing Chosen by the Vampire Kings by Charlene Hart Nady, which I ended up giving 3 stars too, and that is on Audible Escape for you to listen to. I had a very eventful week. I read 8 books and a little bit of a ninth one. Thank y'all so much for all the kind messages that you've sent me and um, how y'all always have tagged me and all the other hosts and all of your Kindle Clear Out things. I loved everything i still need to catch up on watching people's videos just because i've been busy and everything just thank y'all i love all of you um sorry this reading vlog is quite long <laughs> it's very long I hopefully stay to the end <laughs> if you didn't that's okay too <laughs> um but anyways uh thank y'all so so much for watching please let me know if you've read any of these books or if you plan to but yeah thank y'all so much for watching i'll see y'all soon in my next one bye <laughs>